In this video, I'll continue discussing the history of computer viruses, and in particular, uh, we'll look at the next major shift in their evolution, and that really was going uh, from fame to profit. And uh, maybe a good way to descri describe profit is with dollar signs, um, if you are in the U.S. at least. And really, this shift of from going from fame to profit really took place kind of in the in the mid 2000s, really kind of early to mid 2000s. It's a good time to put it early to mid. 2000s, we, we definitely saw this significant shift in the threat landscape. Now, early malicious software writers really were, were primarily interested in notoriety and fame. Uh, some even would go as far as to put their names inside of malware binaries. They, they, they truly had no interest in keeping uh, themselves hidden. Uh, in, in contrast, what we see nowadays is very different. I mean, there was this huge shift towards being profit-driven in the mid-2000s, and, and nowadays uh, threats can be used for doing things like uh, stealing sensitive information. So you've got info stealers that steal information. You may also have uh, spam relays. So I mentioned spam is kind of big business for uh, malware authors, and, and we're definitely seeing more of that type of activity as well. Okay, and, and the other big thing, I think, from a, a technical perspective, the way that the, the actual threats themselves evolved, when the world was about, when the anti-malware world, or the malware world for that matter, was about fame, uh, threats were pretty noisy in nature. I mean, you, would, uh, you wouldn't you would need software to tell you that you've been infected. The threats were just really out there and, and making themselves known and their presence was known on the system. Uh, and nowadays, and really kind of in that, that mid-2000 time period, they went to, to much more uh, of a quiet kind of under-the-radar model as opposed to a noisy model. Now, the other thing is, is that, as you can imagine, as a result of being more quiet and really is an artifact of that, the malware authors began to put more emphasis on finding ways uh, to evade uh, anti-malware vendors. They obviously did not want to be caught anymore. And I think what happened here, and this is kind of a, a, a more fundamental point, is that this, this trend of going from noisy, noisy to quiet and from fame to profit really caused awareness of threats to go down. And I think that was really problematic. I mean, in the past, I mean, people kind of, especially kind of in the late 90s, early 2000s, threats were so noisy, they were so widespread, that people were more aware of cyber threats in the first place. And then going into the mid-2000s, even though there was more actual malicious activity, because that activity was more quiet in nature, people's awareness of the problem actually decreased. And I think that's a really dangerous trend. I mean, we're talking about, on the one hand, the mag magnitude of the problem going up, but people's perception of that magnitude going in the opposite direction. Okay, the other thing I think that's worth noting is kind of on a related note, uh, is that the world in terms of malware went from, used to be what was kind of a large-scale distribution model. So large-scale distribution. In other words, you had a small number of threats and they were on a large number of systems. And that kind of went to a micro-distribution model. So now you have a large number of threats that are on a small number of machines. And uh, that actually certainly makes it more difficult uh, to detect. And in particular, uh, if you look at traditional approaches, the way the traditional vendors, the incumbent vendors in the space, dealt with the problem of malware, it typically relied on methods that were highly manual in nature. And these types of methods are simply outdated in today's environment. And in particular, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to look at things on a case-by-case on -case basis, you're, you're not going to be able to handle that much of a load. And, and you know, again, looking back 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, uh, you were literally seeing maybe tens of threats per day, tens of maybe unique threats. Okay, and nowadays we're literally seeing tens of thousands, okay? Uh, and probably even more, maybe even the hundreds of thousands of unique threats per day. Uh, and clearly this type of, of world in which we're seeing so much activity, this is going to require automation. You're not going to be able to deal with this amount of malware, this magnitude of malware using simply manual methods. Now I think that, you know, that all aside, you know, certainly one thing that's made matters in my mind a lot worse has been, you know, along with this trend, we've seen the development of an underground economy. Okay, and the underground economy is basically a, a place where cyber criminals can 
buy or sell or trade or exchange attack tools. Uh, they can they can exchange information. Uh, for example, let's say that uh, I mount an attack and I get credit card numbers. Uh, I can sell those credit card numbers via the underground economy and not have to worry about directly monetizing them myself. And I think that you know that in turn, I mean, in addition to kind of lowering awareness, I mean, the other big trend when you when you see the underground economy in play is that that also lowers the barrier to entry. And I know this is kind of a a businessy term, but the barrier to entry basically means that. You know, really anybody who, who wants to get involved in the malware game, uh, many more people can more easily get involved. In fact, you can build upon existing tool or ex uh, you can use existing attack toolkits rather than having to write them from scratch. Uh, you could rely on expertise that might exist in other parts of the supply chain. So, for example, um, let's say you know how to build attack toolkits, but you don't know how to actually monetize a stolen credit card number because that in and of itself is not an easy thing to do. You can now take the credit card numbers you get from your attack and then sell them in the underground economy. And so as such, you rely on your expertise to deal with one part of that supply chain and then you can rely on the underground economy to handle the rest for you. Okay, so with that I'm going to kind of draw this, this video to a close. I hope this made some sense to you and, and in the next video I'll, I'll kind of conclude and talk some more about how computer viruses have evolved.